afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Orion McFarlane, and you are watching Sugar Blush. Let's get to business. Reports came in earlier this week of a sexy woman who fell while walking to school. She remained unconscious for a while until the ambulance came. It sickens me to know and to see these passers by as they pass her on the ground that's bleeding there. Sickens me. Nevertheless, eyewitnesses said that they saw the, the lady, the woman, walking, began to stagger, and she just fell. But don't hurt your head, because we, right now, just about now, on the line, we have Dr. George Reeses who will give us a little insight of the lifestyle as Tulsi Lal Singh lived. Hello? Yeah, hello? Hello, yeah. Hi, good day, Mr. Reese. Hi, um, I understand that you're a good friend of Ms. Tulsi Lal Singh. Yeah, Tulsi, Tulsi is my real brethren. Alright, nice, nice. Um, you think you can give me a little insight of the lifestyle that she put you in? Yeah, man. For the last year after she broke up with her girlfriend, Leslie Ann, uh -huh. She began to eat real food, boy. Mm -hmm. Talk about KFC, Pizza Hut, Pizza Boys. She even beat in trying for the own box lunch. For oh, sure. Yeah, boy. She could real drink a sweet drink too, you know. Exercise? She don't know that word. The girl blew up like a blimp. Uh -huh. Real weight. Like a blimp, boy. Uh -huh. Real weight she put on. She... Boy, and don't talk about sleep. Whole day, whole night, she's sleeping with only sweet thing to eat. But I find in this last rounds, boy, she used to get real tired real fast. Uh -huh. And don't talk about studying. The girl couldn't even concentrate for nothing when she tried to study. Oh shucks. Alright, well that's about it. Yeah man. Alright, well thanks sir. Huh? Yeah man, no problem. Alright, later. Bless. Blessings. Well folks, it is alleged that our victim, Ms. Tulsi Lal Singh, has been living a lazy, sweet lifestyle. But do hurt your head, because right now, in studio, we have a few sexy, sexy and hot doctors who were there at the hospital at the time of the Ms. Tulsi Lal Singh arrival and will give us further insight of, of her situation. which were conducted on Ms. Um, Tulsi Lal Singh. It was confirmed that she has diabetes mellitus type 2, which is commonly referred to as type 2 sugar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd like to know like, what, what caused her to well, from the phone call we had before, we understood that she used to eat a lot of fast foods and not sleep a lot, and then she used to eat a lot of sweet things. I'd like to know if that contributed to anything or how any impact on on this what diet? What? Diabetes mellitus type two. Yes, I'd like to find out. Is there an explanation I think I get? Well, in the body there's there are cells for hypocytes and these hypocytes they contain or they store fat molecules, also known as free fatty acids. There are white and brown adipocytes, so we are concerned with the white ones for now. Within the white adipose tissues in the fasting state, that is when the cells are lacking glucose, there is a buildup of fatty acids due to a process called glyceronidinesis. This process, coupled together with the recycling of free fatty acids, which is shown here, the glycerosamine phosphate and the free fatty acids, it is released into the blood and this whole process is based on one enzyme, the PEPCK, also known as phosphoenol phosphoenol pyruvate phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. Okay. With this and this process Enzyme is the product of another process called gluconeogenesis. 
Hormone co glucose corticoid regulates the level of PP in the liver and adipose tissue. Okay, so so that uh, that hormone, what what does the hormone do in the process that you just mentioned? This hormone increases the level of the PP in the liver, therefore causing gluconeogenesis and glyceronegenesis to increase. As an increase, an increase in glyceronegenesis causes an increase in triacylglycerol synthesis in the liver, therefore increasing the level of free fatty acids in the blood. On the other hand, the PEP action in the adipose tissue is being suppressed. Therefore, glyceronegenesis is decreased in the adipose, adipose tissue and recycling of the fatty acid decreases. Therefore, more free fatty acids are released into the blood. Okay, so um, I understand that the, the type 2 diabetes causes something that has insulin resistance. Yes. Um, how does that cause the body to be insulin resistant? Well, these free fatty acids that are released in the blood, they release a protein called pigment epithelium deprived factor, PEDF in short. This triggers the onset of type 2 diabetes. Um, when the PEDF is released into the blood, the muscle and liver becomes desensitized to insulin, and the pancreas produces more insulin to contract this negative effect. And because of this overworking of the pancreas, it causes itself to, it causes the slowing or the stopping of insulin release from the pancreas, hence causing type 2 diabetes in the person. Okay. So are you trying to say that all fat people have diabetes? Not all fat people, but there is a possibility that they can develop this type of diabetes due to the amount of adipose tissues in their body. Okay, so more adipose tissues, then they're more likely to get yes. fat okay. and then get diabetes. Yes, diabetes. Okay then. Um, so are there any other, other than the fat stuff, are there any other stuff that cause, contribute Yes, and I will explain that now. So, when a person consumes a meal, it is broken down to glucose in the blood. And when this is in excess, it sends a trigger a signal to the fetal cells of the pancreas to secrete insulin. Now, the muscle cells consist of an insulin receptor, and in type 2 diabetes, this does not function efficiently, which limits the binding of the insulin at this location. These cells consist of root 4 transporters which would only take in glucose when the insulin binds to the receptor. After several failed attempts for insulin to bind to the receptor, one finally binds, which sends a signal to the GLUT4 to take in glucose. This process of glucose entry is much slower, which results in more glucose and insulin in the blood. The glucose entering the muscles, GLUT4, is converted to GLUT glucose 6-phosphate, and this is converted to glucose 1-phosphate, which is then synthesized by glycogen synthase to give the cell glycogen. Okay, so um, what, which enzyme is involved in this conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate? Um, this enzyme is known as glucokinase. Okay, glucokinase. Right. Um, this individual with type 2 diabetes will take a longer period of time to store glycogen in the muscle. This results in energy deficiency for when the muscle really needs it. Hence, the person gets tired very quickly and is unable to carry out strenuous activities. Okay. Insulin resistance and limited entry of glucose in, these, in this cell would me mean large amounts of blood. Large amounts will be in the blood, which some will enter into the liver, as you can see here. The liver consists of glute 2 transporters, which allows entry and exit of glucose. Large amount of glucose would enter the liver cells, which is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then synthesized by glycogen synthase to form glycogen. Now, glycogen is stored in the liver. However, with excess entry of glucose, it means that the liver's glycogen storage which we, would reach its capacity faster. When the glycogen is in excess, it would then be converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then exits the cell as free glucose back into the blood. Um, okay, so um, also when excess glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, this conducts the last step of gluconeogenesis where glucose is formed. This step is catalyzed by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase and this glucose enters the cell via the glute 2 transporter and back into the bloodstream.
Okay, so I see you only venture like glucuronidogenesis occurs in the liver alone. Does it also occur in the skeletal muscle? No, it doesn't occur in the skeletal muscle because the skeletal muscle lacks the enzyme known as glucose 6 phosphatase. Oh, okay. I don't know that. Um, is that all? Yes. So, um, other than the insulin resistance and the fats, can you tell me anything else, any one of you, about what processes are in that? Okay, well, to refer to what um, Dr. Lin said about the free fatty acids that will be entering the bloodstream. This is due to a process known as ketoacidosis, right? And it mainly occurs in type 1 diabetes, and in rare cases in type 2 diabetes, right? And unfortunately for us, our patient suffers from ketoacidosis. So essentially what happens in ketoacidosis is that we have the ketone bodies which are being produced from the acetyl coenzyme <coughs> and they are present in the mitochondria in the hepatocytes. Mm -hmm. The hepatocytes being in the liver, right? Okay. And when carbohydrate utilization is impaired, right, because of um, an deficiency in the insulin production, it means that the energy must be obtained by fatty acid synthesis. When, there, when there's an increase in the level of acetyl coenzyme A, it will inhibit a complex known as the pyruvate dehydrogenase and it will allow pyruvate carboxylase to be activated. Now, from the, um, when pyruvate carboxylase is activated, we have oxaloacetate. And saloacetate actually being generated and will enter a process known as gluconeogenesis. Mm -hmm. And to refer to what Dr. Cadbury said about gluconeogenesis, it's essentially a process that is there to maintain the blood glucose levels, right? And since we have no glucose entering into the cells, right, gluconeogenesis will take place to allow um, the glucose, well, that gene to be broken down into glucose. So instead of um, the citric cycle taking place, we have gluconeogenesis, and it will be caused by the inhibition of levels of high levels of NADH from too much beta oxidation of fatty acids, which um, also cause a process known as insulin resistance. And when there is excess acetyl coenzyme A, it will be rerouted to ketogenesis to give us ketones. And ketones are acidic, they are toxic, mm -hmm. and in high levels in bloodstream, it will result in the patient going into a state of comatose, which we could account for from the video that was shown. When she fell on the gun? Yes, when she fell on the gun, it was because of the high levels of um, ketones that were being produced. Oh. And if that is not treated immediately, it can lead to death. Oh. All right, and in the first diagram here, right, these are the normal processes that would take place mm -hmm. under you know normal conditions, right? The insulin will go to the brain, it will go to the adipose tissue, and it will also go to the muscle, and it will enter the liver for the various cycles yet to take place. However, because our patient does not have glucose from the bloodstream entering into any of the organs, this causes the um, diabetes mellitus type two where we have an inhibition of those various processes. So then the glucose will like accumulate out of the cells? It will cells. accumulate in the bloodstream and mm -hmm. not enter into the muscle cells. Mm -hmm. And thus we have a buildup of glucose which will give you type 2 diabetes. Oh, so it was that simple? It was that simple. Okay, well thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you look on your screen, you can see videos of the lifestyle where Stussy Lal Singh lived. One that can lead to diabetes. A disease that we have covered in depth today in today's program. I hope that you all were enlightened on the subject and that you will take proper actions to prevent this. This has been another episode of Sugar Rush. See you all next time and stay tuned for Sesame Street.